Hey guys, welcome to my shed on a smoky Memorial Day. There is a fire going on over by Bouquet Canyon about 10 miles from me as the crow flies and you're going to hear those big 747 tankers and Ericsson sky cranes and all that flying over my shed during this episode and I know you all hate that about as much as you hate my oil field and crane stories, right? That's really why you watch the channel. Now, I don't know what's going on with my episodes, but there's been, lately, I've been getting way off out in the weeds and stuff I don't usually do, and that is ship stuff to me in the mail. Now, you'll remember I did an episode about a 1961 old craftsman a uh, value leader had uh, a plywood body, and um, I barely got it in. And Gallia Volt was like, "Hey, I have to have that," so I threw it together. There's an episode right up there, right about now, where you can see that one. But that was something I ordered in off of eBay. Now I've got another guitar that just came in. Oh, before I forget, the mail was good to me. My friend Darren Dukes sent me some neck templates that are the right size for license plate guitars and coffee can guitars and of course cigar box guitars. Darren Duke's always been good to me, thanks dude. But I have another box here and I think I got this one off of Marketplace on FaceTime. Yeah, I know. So uh, I've popped the top of this box, and um, it's kind of an odd guitar that's going to come out of here. It kind of looks a little bit like the value leader, but it's a resonator. So let's cut this box open and see what's in here. Okay, so the first thing I want to tell you is this came out of Tecumseh, Kansas. Tecumseh, Kansas. That's right, cultural capital of the world. Can Tecumseh, like those motors that used to be on the lawnmower. Right? Tecumseh. All right. Here, we use this box as a table. Got a nice soft case. This is a Rogue brand. Sometimes you see, see them marketed as Dean's. Ooh, look at that. What do you see? a resonator with a single cutaway. This, in good shape, sells new for about $450. There's a couple issues here. First off, let's get close. What do you see? You see that break in the neck right there? You see that? All right. You see that hole right there, that birdhouse hole? Yeah, and look at that action, very high. Now, did I pay hardly anything for this? No, did I get awesome shipping? Yes. So this is one of those things that I knew was messed up. Um, you know what I'm going to do with this. I am going to put a plate on the neck. I am going to run dowels. Oh, it even sounds good. Perpendicular dowels down through here to bolt that on and put some scrap metal on it and I'm going to patch up that hole. Uh, but this is right up my alley. I like that. Listen, there's stuff bouncing around in there. It's the input jack. But, you know, people ask me, what's your favorite guitar? Well, today it's this one. Um, but here's the problem. When you're doing these guitars, you got to kind of look like, what can I do with them to make them marketable to somebody besides me? Because, face it, once you've been through 50 guitars, you kind of lose track of the guitars. And the ones you want to keep, they're on the wall. And at some point, nothing becomes sacred. They all go. But somewhere between your passion to do this and turning out Las Vegas-themed and uh, Elvis Presley and Highway 66 themed cigar box guitars by the hundreds until the market burns out. 
is what they call your passion and your passion is found in what you can do with a busted up guitar to make it useful again at least that's what my passion is now there's a day that sticks out to me and today Memorial Day is really important because about a year ago one of the guitars I'm going to tell you about escaped this place and went totally delinquent and you're going to hear that story but there was a day just before that that I went out one morning and I ended up with three guitars in the time span of about six hours and I didn't end up with three I ended up with two and I ended up trading one and then I ended up having to go hunt that one down this is a crazy story that we're going to call Guitar Trader Blues. Now we're going to go back to another area in my shop and we're going to talk about these guitars because I still have two of them and I'm going to show you what happened to the other one. So let's go back there quick and hear this sad, sad story. All right, here we are in another part of my shed. Now y'all might have figured out you Hollywood types not this kind of Hollywood, but people that know about Hollywood. You Hollywood types might have figured out this is a Hollywood lighting trailer. Now, I've always said I will show you my shed sometime, but y'all have to be good enough to see it, and that hasn't happened just yet. Now, I want you to notice that I'm going to call this the wall of shame because that's right. Hold on. I need to overthink this and check out this. Uh, yeah, don't ever ask me what happened to Bill Jackson with the cafe sign that looked like this in liberal Kansas because I don't know anything about it. Anyway, Junk Pile Trader Blues, that's the name of this episode. Now, they don't give you enough letters, so I had to take up some restaurant kind of spelling here and using V's instead of U's and that kind of thing. And he's going to play into this, Troy Marama, get you. For what you did to me because one of these guitars now belongs to Troy Murrah. So let's start our story. So I wake up early one Saturday morning with that Bing bell tone and you know what that is and other people around you know what it is and it scares them because it says yeah there's an arch top out there that somebody else has that you don't wake up I'm the best in the morning anyway at 5 a.m. I'm ready to go snappy ready to go I I sit up and here's this ad for an arch top guitar called an arch craft a r c h k r a f t and any of you that know my channel for any period of time know that there's a playlist where I did all kinds of stuff to that guitar and it's right up there, right about now. Anyway, we did binding. There was a hole in the body. So, I am headed towards Tustin, California. That is like the rest of California, except rich. So, I'm headed down there. I'm going to meet this guy at a Smith's Food King. It's not exactly Sam Ash guitar, but I'll take it. Then, about the time I get in the car, there's another guitar I've been looking at, but it's bundled up with a keyboard. I'm not interested in keyboards. I'm interested in guitars. I'm interested in archtop guitars. I'm interested in old archtop guitars. But this thing, it's got the color of a safety cone, and it looks like a Gretsch, and it's one of them loud things like pumpkin orange that you can't miss and what do you know it's right next to Tustin California where it's at in Garden Grove okay they're 50 miles apart but close enough for me close enough for this story so anyway I've been watching this grouping and the guys trying to sell it all together and I've been trying to say hey hey sell me the guitar sell me the guitar sell me the guitar so finally as fate would have it, it must have been Mercury Retrograde or something. But I get a text from the guy, okay, I'll let it go. 
So I'm leaving nonstop action, acting California, going down into the South Umberlands of Orange County, and I decide I'm going to go get the Safety Cone Orange guitar first. Yeah, it's that one right there. Let me step back and tell you what it is. We will let Chick Flick Teal Pointer do the honors. It is a Brownsville brand arch top. It's got a couple of these 50s looking pickups. It's got a floating bridge. It's got what appears to be a Bixby, but it's not. So it's got a wow bar, a whammy bar. It's got a translucent pick guard. It's got uh, two volume controls, two tone controls, two three or a three-way switch, and it is a Brownsville model WNO360TO. Now, this guitar was made late 90s, early 2000s for the Sam Ash Company music store, and Brownsville was their brand name. Now, what I got this guitar for is pretty much criminal because there's not a mark on it. It's got Grover tuners. It's, it, it's beautiful. There's not a scratch on it. And what I like about this guitar, of course, is this neck that sits into the pocket there. You see it? It's not going anywhere. And this guitar is heavy. And I'll tell you what, it looks like a Gretsch guitar, but it's not. So... This guitar here, let me step back in. I know y'all missed me. This guitar here, I talked to the young man a little bit, and it turns out he's got a baby coming, and guitars, mysteriously, when babies come around, they turn into washers and dryers. So I bought this guitar right there, sight on scene. And then, hammer down, I headed for Tustin. So Garden Grove to Tustin get this other guitar that you all know as the Archcraft Junk Pile Arch Top. Okay, so I pull into Smith's Food King parking lot and I'm looking around and this dude I'm meeting is sitting at a table with a chip case. You know the chip cases, the old guitars came in. And it's all tore up from the floor up. And he says, there it is. And he wants $100. So there cats out of the bag the archcraft arch top that y'all know and covet I paid a hundred bucks for it. it had a hole in it in fact when I picked it off the table it liked to slide out of the chip case that was in three parts already and then the guy told me this guitar would be worth five hundred dollars if it didn't have that hole in the body I found that to be profound you know that's like saying I would be worth $100 million if someone gave me $100 million. Profound. Anyway, I don't have that guitar today because Troy Murrah has it. Imagine that. But anyway, let's do some imagination. Kind of look like this silver tone that I know you're going to covet. See the back? See the neck is very narrow. It's got them butter bean tuners. It's got a V-shaped neck, solid body, solid wood, not plywood. This one is from the 40s. It's kind of like, it's a tad bit older than the California Jump Hall, which we just raffled off at the Acton Schools Music Organization. And every somebody won it and there were so many people coveting, I almost had to open up a tent revival, but right there. But anyway, this Archcraft looked a lot like this one, except there was a big hole in the body here. There was cracks everywhere. The neck was coming off of it. And so I picked it up and I took the foe. This is not the real one. I took the Archcraft and I took the Brownsville and I headed for Acton, but somehow I took a detour. Well, it wasn't really a detour, 
because Ventura, California is right on the way to Acton if you go 200 miles out of your way. So it wasn't about two hours later, I walked into Guitar 48 in Ventura, California. I don't know why I was there. I must have had a vision or something. But I walked in there, and guess what? I saw this right here. Let me step back. We'll switch these guitars out, and I'll tell you its story. All right, Chick Flick Teal Pointer, you are the new Vanna White takeover. This is a Harmony Monterey. Harmony Monterey's were made between 1944 and 1968. And in the 40s, one of these would cost you 50 bucks, and that was a lot of money. This was kind of the top of the line back then. Now, I walked into Rob's Guitar 48 in Ventura. Stay out of there because that stuff in there belongs to me. But I saw this hanging on the wall. And I saw the action. And there were no cracks in it. There's a little bit of binding stuff. One little crack over here had been fixed. It has a roller bridge on it. That didn't come with it. But everything else is what it is. And... It has a truss rod in it. Prior to 1957, there were no truss rods. So, this is also a Harmony Monterey. And it is tore up from the floor up. Look, the binding is coming off. Now, you all know from that playlist we did about the arch craft, arch top, that we know how to do binding jobs. You float up there and find that in the playlist for that. But this one does not have a truss rod uh, but it's a pretty good guitar it is so tore up that i'm going to end up hot rodding it up but this was harmony's better guitar if you were going to buy an acoustic arch top so i walk in and i see this thing and he's got a fair price on it but i'd already bought two guitars for the day so I had to make a choice, a choice that would haunt me forever. You know what I did? I traded the Brownsville WNO630TO for the Harmony Monterey right there. And that's where the trouble started. So for some reason, I can't stay out of Rob's. I'm in there every couple weeks and um, of course he's always got something that he knows I'm going to be interested in. I think you all are in on it with Rob but I'm sitting there and I'm looking at my Brownsville hanging on the wall and it just gets to me. It eats on me. So one day I took an armful of my guitars that I had amassed from the island of guitars that nobody wanted did some work to him and walked in and told Rob, I'm leaving with that guitar today because these two are going to be back together. And they are. So my self-created prophetic prophecy has come true. Okay, let's get to, to the exciting part of the story. First thing we're going to do is go back in my time machine and talk about that arch craft that looked like this but wasn't this. I'm going to show you a clip of Frank Goldwasser playing it in the condition it was in and then fast forward when I got done with it a year ago today it broke out with Troy Murray at Alex's Bar in Long Beach and we'll take a look at those two clips right about now. Now, you know, one night, I was laying down. I heard Papa Mama talking. I heard Papa tell Mama she got up and she told Papa. Oh, no, Mama told Papa about something she heard. She said, look here, Mama, don't you believe a word. I want a boogie. I want a boogie. 
Till the break of day. Talk about complete delinquency. It's still hanging out at Troy's. I swear I'm going to get it back. Because I have a tendency to do that. That's what this story is all about anyway. So, fast forward to yesterday. I've been looking at these guitars. And I've been thinking, you know what? I need to hear them because I don't play. And I keep telling you I don't play. And no, I'm not going to learn how to play. So, I'm thinking, today would be a good day to hear these guitars. So, I, get, I send a text off because I know that R.J. Mishu and Dennis Bell are going to be playing at Boatyard Pub. Hey, you see, that's why I grow this. When I put my neck down, this hides all that. Why? Because I'm getting old. Not old like y'all, but still old even by my standards. Boatyard Pub in Ventura, California, cultural capital of the world. So I sent RJ a text five minutes before he went on and said, I'm bringing these two guitars in. Can you play them? They did. Dennis took the Harmony Monterey outside on a bench. I'm going to give you a clip of that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Wasn't that awesome? Of course it was, or it wouldn't be on my channel. Next, we handed off the Brownsville to RJ. Now, in Acton, where I had left, it's warm and dry. And it's about 70 miles over there in the case. And when we get there, you open the case and you are literally right on the ocean. 
not literally on the ocean, by the ocean. I mean, it's right there. It's like from me to that camera away. So the humidity, so the guitar's doing its thing and <laughs> they're trying to keep it in tune. But RJ gave the Brownsville a run for its money. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> I love you, baby. No, you don't treat me right. Take all my money. You go on every day and night. Baby, please sit down. But I don't see the ball. The ball that you follow. I'm going to say it again. When I don't see the ball, the ball that you follow. When I don't see the ball, the ball that you follow. Yeah, that was good too, huh? That is a pretty guitar. Anyway, <laughs> let's end this out. Yeah, six hours, one day, three guitars, months of torture. I get them both back. This is so good of a reunion. I should get Peaches and Herb to come in here and sing Reunited. In fact, I'll give you a link to that right up there, right about now. Don't let me move all this stuff, and I'll close this one out at the bench. Oh, right. Wasn't that confusing? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to end this episode. I'm going to tell you uh, this Rogue Resonator. I'm going to do my thing to it. We're going to get this action fixed. We're going to put some scrap metal on here. We're going to plate the neck. Um, it's going to be fine. And somebody as crazy as me will want this thing. So keep your eyes open for this one. Hey, if you haven't, give me a like. Do that now. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you soon. I got some guitars to trade and lose and find or whatever. <laughs>